Yes, you got yourself the Steel MS271 Farm Boss. Guys, this is a great saw. This is one of our top selling saws at Carl's Mower and Saw. Just comes in actually just behind the MS261, it's bigger, professional brother. You didn't screw up. This is a good saw. I'm going to go over today what you need to know to get the most out of this saw. This is a saw that you should be running in 15, 20 plus years. This should be a saw that, you know, your kids talk about, like, my dad had a steel chainsaw. Check it out. Let's go over today what you need to know to get the most out of it. Let's start with safety because no matter how good this saw is running, if you're hurt, you ain't running it. So first of all, I want to hit on chaps, right? We need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our legs with chaps. We need to protect our zahones. Zahones protectores. I'm thinking zahones must be legs, but I'm not quite sure. Protect your zahones. Get yourself a pair of chaps. Who knows when that time will come. I get pictures every year from customers that did something not cool with a chainsaw. Luckily, they're still here to talk about it. Protect our ears. Chainsaws are loud, so I want to protect my ears, and I'm going to do ear protection and eye protection either with this right here, or the ultimate would be to have myself this steel extreme helmet, which is going to have fall protection, also kind of more of a kickback protection. Gives me the eyes, gives me the ears, gives me the quick on and off. I love the helmet system, so check out the helmet. All right, safety aside, back at it. Let's talk about fuel. We know this is a two-stroke. I hope we know this is a two-stroke. We picked this up. Our dealership should have gone over the fact that we need to mix oil with gas in a can to make it work. So I'm going to always recommend the Steel HP Ultra or the Steel Moto Mix. And if I'm going out on a Saturday to work hard with my chainsaw, I might as well run my Steel HP Ultra mixed gas. But when this is going into hibernation, when it's going into storage, check out the Moto Mix. It's going to save you some, some problems down the road. It's going to save you from, from a, it won't start in the middle of September, or let's go, it won't start in the middle of January, and there's a windstorm and there's a tree across my, my uh, driveway. I can't get into my, my property because a tree blew down and I can't start my chainsaw because I don't have good gas in it. So good gas, always important. Hit on that all the time. Fresh gas, keep it moving through. Safety, we've got that covered. Let's talk a little bit about how to start this chainsaw. So one is I would make sure that I had my safety gear on. I'm not gonna, not gonna hit that real quick. But to start it, I'm gonna simply squeeze this trigger and push this lever all the way down to choke, okay? This is my start. This is where it's going to fire. And on the second or third pull, this machine is going to pop, give you a burp and say, hey, I wanna run. Now what do we do? Now we come up one notch to the start position. This is actually where it's going to start. And when it starts, it's going to want to be going really fast. At a high speed like that, immediately I squeeze the trigger, it returns to idle. So let's go over the starting procedure of a chainsaw. I just did that, but I, I, I skipped a few things, okay? First off is I want the brake on. Why do I want the brake on? So here's my chain table spin, right? When this saw starts and it's running at a high speed, I'm really not in control of the saw. So let's make sure the brake is on, which stops the chain from spinning. I then squeeze the trigger. I go all the way down to choke and I'm either going to leg lock, pull the rope, or I'm going to put it on the ground and put my foot through here and pull the rope. Okay. One, two, three pops. Wants to run manually up one notch, one, pull the rope. It's rocking, it's at a high speed. Click the trigger immediately, because if I don't, that clutch is fighting the brake and I'm gonna start heating things up really quick. I don't wanna do that, okay? Now I can take the brake off and I'm ready to go to work, okay? Boom, 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 boom. When do I use this brake? When I started it, you saw that. When I'm moving this saw, or even when I'm not using this, so let's say I, I just did several cuts on a, on a log and I need to move some stuff, click that brake on. Set this thing down, go clean up your mess, clear your area, come back to the saw, it's probably sitting there idling, take the brake off and go back to work. Or maybe I've just done a branch cleanup over here and I need to cut something over there, on my way over there I'm going to set the brake. Okay, safety, keep that brake on.
Really, the purpose of the brake is a is a kickback issue. So on a chainsaw, when this thing kicks, it engages that brake immediately. Thank you. That was getting scared. Okay. How do we avoid kickback? Part of it is our cutting practices. Not cutting with this top section right here, the tip. Kind of what we'll call from. We'll call that the 9 to 12, I think, if I was looking at it from your angle. So the 9 to 12 position is, is really that kickback zone. It also happens when my bar gets pinched and the saw gets pulled in, right, and it can come back. So be aware of kickback and the consequences. That brake is there to protect you. Don't take it off. Don't do anything like that. Chain tension, right? As I use this saw, this chain is going to stretch. And as that chain stretches and we get a bunch of slack, in that chain, the likelihood of that chain jumping off increases. And when a chain jumps off, we got problems. We got A, a safety, and we got B, a downtime, because what's going to happen when this chain jumps out of the bar is it's going to generally damage the drivers. And that's these teeth, these triangle shaped things. They kind of look like a mountain. These mountain shaped things right here that damage those drivers. So. Make sure you keep your proper chain tension. I adjust the chain tension by loosening the bar nuts and then tightening this screw right in the middle until we have contact between the top of the tie straps and the bottom of the bar. We got another video on chain tensioning. Check that out. I'm gonna just go over it real quick here and tighten this one up and tighten the bar nuts back up. That's how you start it. We know what we're mixing. We know how to adjust the chain. We know about safety. Back way up. I didn't talk about where to put the gas or where to put the oil. Now that you've like cut for half an hour, now you're going to learn where you put the gas. That's going to go right here. And it's going to be the nice steel caps that you flip up, give it a half turn, pull out. That's your fuel in the back. There's a little indicator right there. And then your bar oil in the front. Bar oil, super important. Every time I fill the gas, I fill the bar oil. I like the platinum bar oil. This is really tacky. It holds on to the bar well, yeah, versus, especially versus a motor oil. Don't go just buy 30 weight oil and run that through your bar and chain. It will cost you money. It'll wear out bars and chains and sprockets. So always bar oil, always a good mix. Keep an eye on your air filter, and that's accessed by these three screws here right on the top. And then just unscrew quickly with the bar wrench that you got. Turns. Right now, open up to the top of the chainsaw. Here is access to my spark plug as well as air filter. It's a really good idea to take this off once in a while and clean the air filter. I can clean this with soap and water. It does need to dry for a day after you've done it. Maybe not a day, but don't go out and clean it right before you go to work. Check your spark plug that's right here. And then, if you've got compressed air, really not a bad idea to just blow this area down. Clean the cooling fins. We don't need sawdust buildup in there because the sawdust buildup becomes heat. It can't cool properly in the long term. We can do damage to our machine. All right, we've got chain tension. We've got lubrication. We've got air filter. We've got spark plug. We've got safety. What other tips do I need to point out to you that, that you should maybe know about? Problems I see is flooding. And so I went over the starting, you know, the two to three poles. If you, if you pay attention to how you start it, you're going to hear it burp, usually on that second or third pull. Never give it more than, or that's going to mean a trip to Carl's. Um, pay attention to wear on your bars and your chains. A lot of people have a tendency, myself included, when I hand file to sharpen one side better than the other. That makes this, actually makes this chain cut off and it kind of pulls it crooked, which then wears out the bottom rail of my bar just because of the way the chain is sitting in the bar group. Keep an eye on your chain sprocket. That's what's driving your chain. That's right back here on the clutch. And ultimately, run good fuel and run it often, and that will avoid a lot of your problems. Hey, anything I didn't cover, guess what? You bought it from your dealer, Carl's Mower and Saw. We gave you this nice folder, and I've got your owner's manual for your steel MS-271. It's going to go over more of the safety stuff, more of the starting, more of the, the routine maintenance, as well as the chainsaw safety manual. Be in the know. Read through this before you start operating this machine. This is going to save you some problems down the road.
Thanks for watching this video on the steel MS271 chainsaw. You got yourself a winner. We hope you get the most out of this and that someday this is being passed down to your next generation. See you soon. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.